Hello everyone. I welcome you all to my YouTube channel. In the previous lecture we have studied about overhead contact line zone, current collector zone and how to connect the equipments which lie within that zone and which lie outside that zone. In this lecture our main focus will be to understand how to connect the equipments which are fed with LB power to the earth. So let's go ahead and start. As per EN 5122-1 clause 7 there are two types of arrangements. First one is the TT, the second one is TN. Apart from that there is one more connection used in railway that is IT which is used mainly by signaling for their point machine and other purposes. But our main focus for this lecture will be TT and TN. So T here refers to terre that is earth. T is basically terre that is a French word for earth and N here refers to neutral. So in this case let us suppose first we go for TT. So what type of connection it will be? So in this case let us suppose this is your secondary of the transformer and this is your source from where the supply LV power is coming. Then you have a breaker and then it is directly fed to the load. This is the enclosure of your load or your equipment. Here it is connected to the earth at the source end. There is no separate transformer in between. There is directly from the source LV power is coming directly to the equipment and then this equipment is also connected to the earth but which is completely separate from the source earth. So these two are completely separate. Now in this case this connection is basically the TT connection. In this case in case there is a fault. So let us suppose there is a fault in the line conductor. This is your line and this is your neutral. So let us suppose there is a fault and the conductor is touching the enclosure. Then this current as it is connected to the earth the current will start flowing and this way the current will go back to its source and the path will get completed. So the fault current will be flowing from here to in the body and then through the earth and this will lead to the tripping of circuit breaker. Now in case if a person is touching and as you have connected to the earth he will be safe but whether this breaker will trip or not we are not sure so that we need to design the breaker accordingly. Why we are not sure is because we are not sure about the resistance of this path. This path resistance can vary any time due to temperature due to different seasons. Suppose you are designing a system for one ohms and you have designed and after a few, year, few months you come ahead and check due to summers or due to dry very heat um, due to heat the resistance of this will be changed because the soil resistivity will change. So in this case we are not sure about the dissipation resistance of the earth electrode that you have installed here. So to be on a safer side EN5122-1 recommends when you are going for TT system then always go for an RCD. RCD can be either RCCB residual current circuit breaker or you can provide an RCBO which is combined with MCB and RCCB both. We will discuss about this in separate lecture. But just to understand what RCCB will do here is that it will sense the current between line and neutral. So the current is flowing in normal condition let us suppose we take talk about normal condition. So this is just like an Empyrean loop. So if the current is coming in and the current is going out. So the net current that is delta I will be line phasor sum of line plus neutral which will be zero in case of normal conditions. But in case of fault and in case the resistance is very very high. So the current that will be flowing through this path will be very low and in case you are providing an MCB it will not trip but in case of RCCB or RCBO it will see that okay the current going through this Empyrean loop is IL but from neutral it is not returning it is returning through earth. So this delta I will be some value depending upon the fault current and let us suppose this value if it is around 30 milliamps it will trip. So normally RCCBs either they are 30 milliamps or if the rating is 100 milliamps or 300 milliamps or 500 milliamps 
according to the rating of RCCB, it will sense, okay, if you're providing 30 milliamps, if the fault current is 30, it will trip. If you're providing 400, it will trip 400 and likewise. Normally, we go for 30 milliamps of RCCBs at the final circuit to be on safe side. So you will see in case your resistance is even very high. So let us suppose we check for this. Now let us, uh, as we know that as per IEC 60364-41, the safe voltage for AC system for a person is around 50 volts. So in case the voltage is 50 and the current flowing is 30 milliamps. So if I write 30 milliamps here, 10 to the power minus three. So you will get the resistance value. So if you check this value is 50,000 divided by this. So you will get a value of 1666.67 ohms, which is a very high. So even if the resistance of this path is very, very high, then also this breaker will trip. So that is why we always refer and we always recommend to go for RCCB. Now, in case of TN system, there are three options normally. One is TNS, which is the main. Then it is TNC and one is TNCS. As per 5122-1, we only take care of TNS. However, I will just explain the difference between these three. So in case of TNS, you will have again your separate source. Now the LV power is not coming. If even whatever power is coming, like it is MV or HV, you will convert it. You will have a separate transformer at your source end. So like this is your receiving end, you will have a dedicated transformer. You will isolate both the circuits and this transformer, let us suppose from this transformer, then you are feeding your load. And this is your enclosure and this is connected to the earth. So your enclosure earth and the neutral will be separate. So this is your neutral line neutral, which is neutral is separate and the earthing for this enclosure will be separate. So from here, if you can provide a dedicated conductor, which is called PE conductor protective earth. So neutral and earth are separate here for this equipment enclosure. So that is why this S represents separate. So earth neutral separate for TNC, it is earth neutral combined. So what type of connection it will be? This is your again, the source and this is your line neutral and then this is your load and before entering here you will terminate here also so you have an earth conductor acting as well as the neutral both are same then in case of tncs for some portion the neutral and earth will be same and later on as you go ahead there will be a dedicated conductor connected to the earth. So till this point it is TNC and from here it is TNCS. So PE conductor and neutral are separate here. Now why this system is considered better in new buildings or where new installations it is always recommended to go for TNS. Why? Because in case of fault. So let us suppose there is a fault here. So in this case the fault current will flow from the body and now you have a dedicated path. You have a dedicated conductor, just like a neutral, like neutral was taking the return current here. You have a dedicated path, which is the PE conductor and the current will go from here back to the source and it will current will be moving like this in the loop here. You had a problem that what can be the resistance? We are not sure what will happen here. We are sure that there is a dedicated path and the current will move to this. So the MCB, if you are providing, it will trip. Even if you're providing MCB, it will trip. However, still it is recommended that in final circuits. So like if you have a lighting circuit at the, just the final circuit, you must go ahead and provide an RCD. It is recommended as per EN 5122-1 to be on the safer side. So this is the main difference between TT system and TNS. There are other benefits of TNS too, like it is better for EMC and other purposes. However, we'll discuss it further when we go on. So now we have a clear idea of how TT and TNS system work. Now in case of AC railway, in DC railway it is separate. We are discussing here for AC railway. So in case we have a TT system and where to use it first of all, where to go for TT system is 
in case we are getting an lv power supply from the utility and we do not have any separate transformer here we are just directly getting an lv power supply and we are using it for our station lighting and other purposes or we are having a signaling hut we are using it for that signaling purpose there is no segregation there is no isolation in between so this lv power is coming this is a sign for neutral and this is for earth so as source earth and the near the equipment wherever we are receiving earth have to be separate so we have separated these two earths there is no connection in between so line 1 line 2 line 3 and neutral are coming we will use it for our equipment and for earthing we will install our earth mesh or earth rods here at our so uh, receiving end this earthing will also be connected to the utilities like gas pipelines and metallic works apart from that for lightning protection also it will be the same there is no concept of separate earthing for lightning or clean or power earth this is all a misconception which i have explained in my lecture eight of earthing and bonding series so you can go ahead and watch and this earthing is also connected to the running rails and also along the wayside if you have mast this earthing is for the mast also we will connect it to the running rails or we have a separate earth or we can directly connect it to the b b e c that is buried earth conductor or tunnel earth conductor or we have other options like a e c b e c uh, a e c and a e w or o p c which we have discussed previously and i will discuss separately about them too now apart from this sometimes we install a three core cable that is line neutral or pe or we install a five core cable which has line neutral all three lines neutral and pe or we install a two wire system that is line and neutral and we have a bec in between that is running this buried earth conductor which is connected to the same earth mesh and we are using that earth only now apart from this there is a tns connection now tns connection will always have a dedicated transformer that is typically dyn11 which we have in our auxiliary substations at the for uh, for the station lighting mep signaling telecom and other purposes so here we are getting an mv or an hv supply from the grid or from the source and then we have a delta connection here and then we have a star and from here we are distributing the supply to our stations and other distribution place here the neutral is connected to the earth of the structure of the station all are connected same to the same thing to the same earth mesh the enclosure of the transformer also connected to the same earth mesh and from here we take let us suppose we have an equipment in the way side we are using one phase so the single phase so this will be connected to line 3 let us suppose line 3 and the other to the neutral and this is the buried earth conductor or the pe so this pe can be your bc or tc depending upon whether it's going in tunnel so it is known as tunnel earth conductor if it is wire duct or at grid it is buried earth so we will connect our equipment to this earthing along with this we are also connecting to the running rails now whether to go for two pole breakers or four pole breakers in case it is a three phase supply or whether to go for single pole or three pole there is always a doubt in that so this two pole is recommended as per en 5122-1 or four pole that we need to break the neutral also in case of fault it is recommended in case your rail potential is greater than 50 now rail potential is generally greater than 50 nowadays as per traction simulation you will see that so in case it is greater than 50 what will happen we'll see it now so let us suppose there is a fault and let us suppose it is only a single pole breaker this has tripped and a maintenance person comes here and he tries to touch this point so what will happen as this neutral is connected to the running rails so you see there is a connection here and the neutral is also connected to it in case this running rail potential is greater than 50 so at this point there will be some voltage which can be harmful for the person so there can be a touch potential hazard so to avoid this what we do we go ahead and always go for a two pole breaker so that is why it is recommended always to go for two pole and four pole so this point must be considered or else if you are not using so then you need to adopt some safety procedures whenever a person is coming to this then this there must be a discharge rod which will never be there uh, most of the cases 
uh, it is not there practically it is not possible and the person goes and checks with the tester and he will find that there will be some voltage so it is better to go for a two pole and a four pole breaker now sometimes this connection if you want to see how it looks like actually on the wayside i'll draw it so in case this is your transformer and this is the neutral and from here let us suppose a single phase is going and here neutral is going so this is your load and along the way side you will see that you have a buried earth conductor which is coming from this same earth mat it is connected to the stations everywhere and this is going along the wire duct and from here you are taking a through a pg clamp you are connecting here or through a c clamp you are connecting your equipment so in case of any fault the current will flow from here from this vec enter here come to the source and then it will break the circuit now one thing to note is that sometimes it is recommended always to go for 3 wire and 5 wire however as per iec 6036 4-4-41 in clause 415.2.2 it states that a pe conductor is not necessarily be closer to it that right? it is not necessary that it shall be directly connected or it shall be coming along within this phase however as per i triple e 142 it clearly states that the conductor shall be as near as possible this is a correct approach to have a conductor as near as possible why because in case of fault so like this if there is the loop is bigger then there are chances of getting voltage induced for the circuits which are lying within this circuit how so let us suppose this is your line and this is your earth conductor and the current is flowing like this so if you apply right hand thumb rule so the pointing the current direction is my thumb and this is your magnetic field so it is going inside this and here it is coming out so dot here also it will go inside on this side for this line conductor now for this earth it will be inside here so I will notate, draw a cross here, again inside here, because of this all will be inside this and it will be outside on this side. So if you see it cancels out here, outside it will cancel out, outside it will cancel out, whereas inside there will be a dense amount of magnetic field. Due to this, the impedance will be higher for this path. So the impedance is basically flux over current. So the impedance will be very high as the flux is very high and flux is basically dot product of magnetic field and cross section area. So magnetic field is high, flux is high, flux is high. So the impedance is high. If impedance is higher, maybe your MCB will not trip or also if impedance is higher and magnetic field is higher then any circuit which is lying within this loop. So let us suppose this is a circuit which is lying within this loop. There will be voltage getting induced which can cause an issue in within this circuit which are lying within this range. So it is always recommended to have an earth conductor very near to it. This will avoid EMC issues. So this is an overview of how the connection looks and what all we need to do in case of wayside earthing and bonding. In the next lecture we will focus on the civil arrangements, how they have to be connected to earth and what all we focus and I will explain how buried earth conductor, aerial earth conductor or other conductors behave. So thank you for listening to my lecture and God bless you all.